Hey, man. Hey, Brian. How you doing? <laughs> hey, how's everything going? Everything's working out yeah. good here. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right, mate. I managed to uh, get the Skype working. <laughs> great, great, great. This is the great Lee Oates of Soldier Fear with the new EP coming out October 29th. Bury the ones we love. Five out of five stars on our site, Rock Eyes. What do you think about that? I, well, I, I'm absolutely uh, over the moon with it, to be honest. Uh, great, thanks. Thanks for the uh, support, the kind words. Uh, we put a lot of work into it, but, uh, yeah, I'm really glad you liked it. Great, great. You're on Metal Box Recordings. Uh, how'd you hook yes. up with How'd you hook up with that? Well, we um, we were working with um, Steve Ray, who plays guitars in the band, and uh, he was producing us. And he um, he suggested before we actually recorded, we had we had some really um, rough demos. Um, he suggested sending them to Anna over at Metal Box and seeing what she thought. And uh, it turned out she really liked the stuff. And uh, yeah, we we kind of hooked up for the for the EP, and hopefully. Uh, the album next year so yeah very cool. that's how it came about very cool now um one of the first bands you were in i i, I hope i get the saying right it's a uh, not a dean uh nine to nine, nine, to we, nine. We, yeah yeah well tell me a little bit about that band were you anything before that um well nine to nine was the first kind of band that we uh we uh dropped on a record deal with did a lot of touring um played with um did a did a uk tour Really, with a band called Hamano, which is uh, John Garcia from Caius's band, and it was a, it's a pretty heavy band. And uh, um, to be honest with you, I think we 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 missed out on a deal through through a, a number of things, but uh, there was something in the pipeline that we missed out on, and and from there, really, it became very hard to to continue. Um, but yeah, we we did we did we did really well, and it was a good learning curve. Was that band? Very cool, very cool. Did, after that, you went to Rise to Addiction. That's right, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. And and definitely there was a little bit of musical change from uh, 99 to uh Rise to Addiction. Uh tell me a little bit about that. Well, I think I think um Rise to Addiction were more commercial in 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 a sense that um uh, we went for big riffs but big choruses. Um not not a million miles away from the field that Soldier Field operates in to be honest. Um but uh yeah, I got a a call to go and audition uh, with Rise to Addiction, knowing that it was the um, the ex-members from Blaze, Bailey's band from Iron Maiden. Um, they they just split with Blaze and wanted to uh, carry on <clears throat> with a with a new band, and um, we took it from there really, and it re it really worked well. We we released two albums on uh, signed to uh, Mausoleum uh, Records in Belgium, who are a, a famous old old school metal label, and uh, went on tour with Trouble from Chicago. Did a, did a full European tour with those guys, and that was just brilliant. And uh, did a lot of festival work and things with Rise to Addiction. It was a, it was a really, a really good time. Very cool, very cool. And then, then you went to Order of Voices. Uh, uh, what I hear, it sounds like Soundgarden had sex with Tool. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, we we um, we uh, started doing Order of Voices myself and Ainsley, the uh, drummer from Rise to Addiction. Um, just with when we had some downtime with Rise to Addiction, and uh, both myself and Ainsley were big um, fans of kind of alternative metal. Um, a bit more alternative than what Rise to Addiction were doing, and uh, yeah, we 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 got involved with the guys from Order of Voices, and uh, we've put out an album, working on a new album at the minute, really, um, and that that's um, all around Europe. It's not had much exposure in America, but uh, all around Europe, it's uh, it's doing quite well. So Great. yeah, happy happy with that. Great. Now you went to Soldier Field. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Who, who decided to start the band, and and how did it all you know melt together? Well, it, the the. The first initial work was done by Andy Trott, who plays guitars and uh, he's kind of the, uh, a bit of the visionary, if you like, for this uh, for this band. Um, he put together some demos and um, was really struggling to get a full lineup at the time. This is uh, kind of summertime last year, and he'd asked Steve Ray, um, my my um, partner in crime from Ice to Addiction, to produce it. So. Uh, uh, they were struggling for a singer at the time, and Steve said, would you be interested? And I said, I'll have a listen. And uh, when I heard the stuff, I was blown away by it and said, yeah, I'll get involved how, in it, you know, however I can, really, if Andy, if Andy would like me to. Uh, and he went from there, really. We, we wrote a lot of songs very quickly and then went in the studio to produce the, the EP proper with Steve, um, kind of March, April time this year, and it came together really quickly. So um, that's how it came to be. Uh, so working closer with Andy really on on the songwriting side of things. Cool, cool. Now the the, the song I, I guess you're pushing in the beginning is "Feel Alive." Is that it? Sorry. 
uh, the first song that you really are pushing, you know, to the fans is Feel Alive. Is that true? I, I think so. That's that's that could be the first single. We we also thought about, um, you know, really getting uh, quite heavy on things and and picking uh, um, Leave You in Dirt, which is the third track. Um, but we'll be shooting a video for one of the one of the two tracks really in the next week or two, and that'll be pushed out to all the usual places, and you know you'll be able to see it on YouTube and so on. But uh, I think yeah, that was the first track that that kind of people hooked onto. In fact, that's the that's the track that signed us to Metal Box, Feel Alive. Cool, cool. Yeah. Actually, my favorite uh, song is uh, the title track, uh, "Bury the Ones We Love." Oh, cool. I, I yeah. think that's an amazing song because you know oh, it really give. Uh, you know, a good sense of the feel of the song, and uh, I just liked it. I, I really liked yeah. it. Yeah, well, cool. Thanks a lot, mate. That, that was the last uh, kind of song to actually go on the EP. We'd already got the EP tracks together, and then we, we'd work, been working on that one and uh, thought, well, this is really good. We should we should try and shoe on this one onto the EP. And it ended up being the first track on and, and, the, and the title track as well. So, yeah, we're really glad we, got, we, we managed to get that one on there. Cool, cool. Now, with Soldier Field, you know, talking about Soldier Field and soldiers yep. and stuff like that, and Bury the Ones We Love, was that try to, like, you try to, like, put the title track to the name of the band, or how'd that work? It, it, it just worked out that way. We we, um, we kind of wanted a concept behind the band, and, um, you know, we we were thinking about this. Andy's a, a, big, a big fan of horror stories and, and, and kind of post-apocalyptic <laughs> zombie stuff and uh, it came about that way really so uh, uh bury the ones we love is a, a, a line from i think one of the uh, uh is it the um it's one of the uh the new the new series from a uh, zombie series and series and basically you bury the ones you love and burn the rest so uh, that's how it kind of came about cool cool H- how'd you know in the very beginning that, you know that uh, you had a talent for vocals um, well, I've been singing a long time. Uh, I, I kind of messed around in bands when I was younger, um, but I started really playing bass when I was 16 in bands and then and then progressed to vocals quite quickly after that. And then, uh, really, I'm, I'm completely self-taught, but uh, obviously I've taken a lot of guidance from other people and, and uh, been, been lucky to meet a lot of, um, a lot of good singers and actually, uh, you know, be on bills with people and be able to have good chats with them and so on. So... I just I just realized that there was something there and then and then obviously you you refine your talent working in the studio and that's how it, that's how it all came about really a, a lot of recording hearing what you sound like making changes to how you deliver things and eventually end up where I am now which is you know hopefully a, a point where people do enjoy my vocals cool cool well, who was an influence for you then um, I guess getting started, it was it was the the usual suspects really. I used to I used to well I still do. Um, although I'm not sure what's going on with them now, but <laughs> I used to love uh, Jeff Tate from Queensrÿche, um, uh, Bruce Dickinson obviously, and then really as as we moved into the grunge era, um, you know I, I I used to love and and still do uh, Lane Staley from Alice in Chains. Um, he's one of my favourite singers, and uh, Cornell obviously. Um, but yeah, those those kind of guys. Some somebody with real power, but some soul as well. I like is it Lesion from uh, Seven Dust. I think he's a fantastic singer. Um, so yeah, people with soul, but I, I like a lot of power as well. I, I I'm not not so keen on the, the the smaller voices. Cool, cool, cool. Now, what was it like the feeling when uh, the first time somebody came up to you and said, you know, I want your autograph? <laughs> uh, <laughs> quite quite surreal, as you'd imagine. Um, Done a lot of signing over the years, and uh, it's all about making sure you uh, can actually read it, so people know where it is. <laughs> I guess, but uh, yeah, it's it's quite it's still quite a surreal situation, you know. Uh, I say when we when we were on tour in Europe, people would actually be waiting by the by the tour bus for us to walk out and you know have, have photos to sign and things, and you think, Christ, <laughs> strange, strange. But if it if, if it makes people happy and it's what people want, then. God, I'm, you know, I'm happy to do it. All we're doing is playing songs at the end of the day. Right, right, right. Um, your career has been fairly long, um, you yeah. know, through uh, many bands. Um, yeah. What is your hopes for Soldier Field right now? Um, I, th- I think we're all we're all p- feeling very positive about the band. Um, we've got a fantastic lineup. You know, we can go out and play shows with, you know, any band really. So we're looking at jumping on a few shows. Um, 
we're also working very hard on the songs uh, for the for the next release already, um, and we'd love to have the album done. You know, certainly certainly uh, before summer next year. So we're gonna you know kind of lay the lay the 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 ground if you like with the EP and then hit people with the album next year um, and really it's just just pushing on it's people like yourselves who have taken a real interest in the band that you know it makes us think yeah we've got something and we've just got to push it really cool cool do you foresee you playing in the United States next year I would love to the problem is money always money isn't it, <laughs> it always 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 comes down to money you know uh, for us to get out to the states we'd need to be I think playing playing on a bill with with somebody bigger, and and to get to that point, you need to have some backing to be able to, you know, uh, most of the time buy onto these tours some way. So it's either a label or it's <laughs> somebody working five jobs or whatever. But yeah, it'd be it'd be, it'd be brilliant to get out to America because I think the music we're playing, I think I think it will go down well on you know radio and and live in America. Um, so it's a fingers crossed, I think, at the moment. Cool, cool. Was there any restrictions when you signed to Metalbox Recording? No. Free range, right? Yeah, free range. I think um, it's a it's a kind of you help us, we'll help you kind of deal, and um, we, we it's just the it's just for the EP currently. So you know, if uh, Christ, if somebody big came in, we'd we'd obviously be able to talk to them. Um, on the other hand, Anna and Larry have done a fantastic job of helping us out so far. And uh, it, it would take something quite serious to, to kind of crowbar us away from them, I think. Cool, cool. Now, you just got your first, I guess, uh, merchandise with a new shirt, right? Yeah, got a new shirt. I guess I guess uh, we'll send you one over, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> sure, no problem. You know, so, so you're starting to do the merchandise. You're starting to yeah. flow. Uh, the reviews are good. Um, yeah. You know, you're going to be working on a new uh, release for next year. Yeah, um, it, I think we're we're in we're in a good position at the minute. You know, the reviews are coming in and they're, they're coming in really strong, um, which kind of it it helps you uh, feel good about what what you already knew, which was you had something good on your hands. But it, it's nice when reviews kind of say the same thing. Right. You know, because there's so many bands that think they've got the best album, uh, you know, ever, and at the end of the day. Unfortunately, it, it's it's not the band that uh, you know have the final say. It's usually the reviewers and, and radio people and so on. So uh, it's nice when people think the same as you do. Cool, cool, cool. Now, now what do you do on your downtime? What do I do in my downtime? I'm a I, I I'm quite a keen sportsman, so I uh, I like to uh, swim. I'm a swimmer. Um, it helps me chill out, you know. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Float about in the water. Yeah. What what was say you went to you know your first concert like as a mm. as a kid what what was that first concert? My first concert was um, Bon Jovi. Cool. In, in uh, 1986, as a as a really young kid, um, I went with my dad. My dad took me, and it was uh, Bon Jovi uh, with Cinderella supporting. <laughs> wow, wow! Did that have any impact on you at all? Oh, it absolutely blew my mind. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I I just thought, wow, this is absolutely amazing. This is what I want to do. But uh, you know, I'm sure most most guys in the audience thought same. So. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, as a collector, do you ever collect anything? Um, not that I can think of. Uh, Andy has a, a a vast collection of uh, horror movies. <laughs> um, yeah, he likes he likes the uh, um, the horror DVDs and so on, but. Not really. Okay. Uh, yeah. All, all the, on the EP, is there any uh, particular song you like singing the most? Um, difficult to say, really. Um, th- they've all come out really well. I think "Bury the Ones We Love" is a, a, a is one of my favourite vocal lines that I wrote. I just I just like the melody around it. Um, some of the heavy ones, great to sing live, but I think from a melody point of view, uh, "Bury the Ones We Love" is 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 my personal favourite. Cool, cool, cool. Can you tell me your impression of each member of the band? And you have a new drummer too. Yeah, Jeff. Um, Jeff Jeff Singer's drumming for us now. Um, fantastic drummer. Um, play, played with a, a, a couple of really well-known bands. Um, he's, he's recently been playing with Paradise Lost, to a, a, a very good band. And uh, yeah, he's, he's a, a really funny guy. Um, Cy, bass player, is pretty quiet, but uh, he uh, certainly holds the bottom end down. <laughs> then you then you got Steve, who's uh, say my partner in crime, uh, 
he he plays uh, guitars, and he's a uh, he, he's he's probably the funniest guy I know. He he makes me laugh the most out of anybody I've ever met. He's he's hilarious. Uh, and then you've got Andy Trot, who I think is is um, is a really talented guy. He's he's come up with a lot of the ideas, a lot of the a lot of the songs, uh, you know, strong structures and and the main riffs and so on to get us started. Um, you know, in this in this position we're in now, and I, he, he's been the driving force a lot of the time behind getting some of the things done. And uh, yeah, he's a really 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 good guy. Cool, cool. I'm not sure they'd say the same about me. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Um, I have a real important question to ask you. Why, All right, go. You ready? Yep. Why do you call yourself Erko T. Peacock? <laughs> I, I've got many an alias. That's just one of them. Yeah, that's just one of them. I but I, well, I can I can tell you why this one is actually. Go ahead. Um, with some some reviews I got a long time ago, I I was uh, described as as moving in a simian way. So that's the Urko from Planet of the Apes. And Peacock, I used to have a very strange Mohican style hairstyle. So there you go. Cool, cool. You could thank Andy for that qu- question. You know. Yeah. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> But yeah, I have many aliases. So I'm sure you'll get to know them all eventually. <laughs> so I congratulate you on the EP, uh, five out of five stars on our site. Thanks a lot. Looks mate. like you guys Thank are taking you. off. All the reviews I read were excellent. Um, yeah. Would you like to say anything in conclusion to your fans out there? Well, well, I'd like to say thanks a lot for every, for all the interest so far. Um, we'll see you out on the road. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Brian, for. Uh, uh, you know, giving us this opportunity to, to have a chat today, but also for the review. Um, and really, if you need to keep up with Soldier Field, you can check us out on uh, our website. That's soldierfieldband.co.uk. Uh, and we're always around on Facebook. So that's facebook.com forward slash soldierfieldband. So you can check us out on those two. Uh, we've also got Twitter. I might as well throw that one in. So you've got twitter.com forward slash soldierfielduk. So uh, come and say hello. And uh and keep, we'll keep you up to date with what we're doing. Thanks very much, Lee. Thanks very much, mate. It's been Talk, a pleasure. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.